جو محمد کا وفادار ہے اللہ اس کا کربلا اس کی نجف اس کا مدینہ اس کا زندگی ہے تو بس علی کی طرح موت آئے تو یا حسین حسین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین اب القاسم محمد وعلى آلہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین سیما بقیت اللہ العظم روحی وعرواہ العالمین له الفدا رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل لکتت من لسانی یفقہ قولی In the saying of Imam Ali in Nahj al-Balagha that I read the last time I was here and I'm just going to read that and go through say a little bit more about that one little saying regarding the nature of world and the realm that we live in the dunya and the life that we are living through it has a nature and understanding its nature is really important in trying to understand how we should live our life here most people live their life without even knowing what the nature of the world is and since they don't know the nature of the beast they don't know how to live their lives and that's why there's frustration there's misery there's unhappiness in fact a lot of depression why because we don't know the nature of this world of this life and we make mistakes because because we don't know how the nature is we don't know how it's going to react we do things thinking that there's going to be a certain reaction, but it doesn't work that way. So it's better that we know the life of this world, we know its nature, and that's what Imam Ali, in many places, and in fact, if you look at the Quran, in many places the Quran also goes through the nature of life here. It goes through the nature of life. For example, Allah speaks about an ayat of the Quran that, in one of the ayat where he speaks about the nature of life that you know that I read for you before where Allah says وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَحْوًا وَلَعِبْ the life of this dunya is nothing but a game it's nothing but a game so just like you don't take games seriously you don't take the life here seriously don't take it too hard and what happens is that when people try to take life hard and everything becomes serious for them, you know, and they, they take it so hard that their, all their worries and anxiety is regarding things that are happening in this world, in this dunya right now. You see that? Everything, all their headaches is just about this dunya. And they don't realize that, you know, take it easy. That's what Allah is saying. Just take it easy. It's just a game. It's just a game. Don't take it too hard. It's nothing big. But we take it really, you know, really hard. Everything is hard. Right? And if something happens to us, we are like depressed. We are like unhappy. We have complaints. And we start to nag and, you know, say things. Why are we doing that? Because we're taking it too seriously. Just like that in this saying that Imam Ali has, He's describing the nature of dunya, one aspect of it. And it's good for us to know. He says, إِذَا أَقْبَلَتِ الدُّنْيَا عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ عَارَتْهُ مَحَاسِنَ غَيْرِهِ وَإِذَا أَدْبَرَتْ أَنْهُ سَلَبَتْهُ مَحَاسِنَ نَفْسِهِ Two things, two aspects of dunya he's saying. He's saying that there are two aspects of dunya. There is an iqbal of dunya and there is an idbar of dunya. There is a time when dunya when the life of this world turns towards you this state is called iqbal iqbal means to welcome someone to to uh, accept them to acknowledge them like for example when you walk in the masjid and people know you they acknowledge you right it's called iqbal and when iqbal is done so dunya also has a state of accepting you of acknowledging you and dunya has a state of turning its back towards you that will be time when you are unwanted when you are not liked and you'll see that state come in and it's never one state all the time for everyone the state just changes back and forth back and forth in another place 
where Imam Ali explains this, he explains this, he says what? That happiness nor sadness is ever permanent in this world. It's never permanent. It's going to be sometimes you're happy and then you see that happiness goes away right away. Some news comes, something happens in your life and it turns into sadness. But that sadness also doesn't last long. After a while you get news that you're happy again. Or something happens in your life that you're happy again. This state is always ever changing. So it's one good thing to know when you are sad and when you are depressed that it's not going to last forever. That it's not going to last long. Because that's the nature of this life. That's the nature of the life of this world. So when we know that, it really makes it easy for us to live our life. I mean, imagine that, for example, if, if someone is going, to, is going through a lot of grief. You know, for example, someone that you love passed away. Or, for example, you know, you got some terrible news in your life regarding, I don't know, disease or cancer or something like that. Which now you know that your life is going to be cut short. Something happened. <coughs> At least you can get comfort in the fact that it's not going to last long. It's not going to last long. It's going to finish. You see, if you knew the nature, we wouldn't be so miserable. But what makes people more miserable than what they already are is the fact that they think that, you know what, now I have this, I'm doomed, it's finished, I'm over, there's nothing to live for, and hence now what happens is that they go deeper and deeper into misery. Why? Just because they don't know how the system works, how life works. And that's what Imam Ali is explaining here. He says that there's two aspects of life. There's one that it accepts you and one where it turns its back on you. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. These two words, Iqbal and Idbar, are also used in fiqh. In rules of fiqh, you will read this. In ahkam, you will read this. For example, in the rules of using the washroom, it is said that it is haram to urinate while facing the Qibla or having your back towards the Qibla. You see, either when you're doing istiqbal of the Qibla or doing istidbar of the Qibla. You know, it's haram for you to use the washroom while you're facing the Qibla or having your back towards the Qibla also. That's why whenever bathrooms are made in the house, it is made sure that they are crossways. So we don't in any angle sit towards the Qibla or having our back towards the Qibla. Many places, this is one of those sins and guna and masiyat that almost everyone does because whenever they have to go to the bathroom while they're traveling, do they ever see that? Do you ever notice that? Because it is haram, it is outright haram to face the Qibla or have your back towards the Qibla when you're using the bathroom. And it's one of those mistakes that most people make that they don't take a compass along. Just like for example you see the direction of the Qibla when you want to pray, you also have to see the direction of the Qibla when you have to go to the loo. <coughs> it is important that you do that, it's one of those rules in fiqh that you have to do. And hence the words that are used is Iqbal and Idbar. This is exactly what it means to have your, uh, to face something or to turn your back towards something. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You know, when it comes to the relationship between dunya and Imam Ali, it's not a good relationship. Right? If there's anyone that the dunya is going to complain about on the day of judgment. If there's anyone in the world that the dunya is going to complain about on the day of judgment, it's Imam Ali. Because Imam Ali has stripped dunya naked. I mean, he has exposed the dunya in such a way that if a person reads the words of Imam Ali, 
they would really look at dunya as something that is so terrible, so horrible, that I don't want to get in, you know, in any distance of this because I am going to get affected by the contagious, disgusting disease that it carries. This is how badly Imam Ali exposed it. No one has exposed dunya the way Imam Ali has. If you read Nahjul Balagha, just read it. As a reading, you will see that this, the villain in Nahjul Balagha, if, if that was a novel, then the villain is dunya. That's the villain. It's like the evil foe, the evil enemy that's out there to get you and you need to be aware of that and you need to get away from that. That is how bad it is. That's how much Imam Ali exposed the dunya. And this is why when you look at how much it is, it is truly a place where, ye, where it deceives you. It deceives you. You are deceived by it. It shows you a face, but it's not that. When you get close to it, it has a different face. It's like soda. When you put the soda in, it rises up and you think the glass is full. But if you wait for a few moments, it goes away. And you're like, what happened? It's finished. Just like that. Dunya is like that. It seems full, but when you get close to it, it's empty. And this is the reality, how much it is. Allah speaks about that in the Quran. This ayat where he says, Hala hayat dunya. That do not be deceived by the world, by the life of this world. It's a deceiver. It's a deceiver. There's no doubt about it. It's a deceiver. You can, uh, and it's really good at it too. And if you think that you're not deceived by it, then you're deceived by it. Anyone who thinks that they're not deceived by the dunya, the life of this world, they are already deceived by it. You are caught in its web and you are now helpless. You know how you see a ant or an insect that's caught in a spider's web and it's helpless because the more you move, the more web comes around you. You're in that situation waiting for that spider to come and slowly eat you away. That's where we all are right now. If we think that we are not caught. You know, to assume that we are not is such a, because Allah is saying, it's going to be hard for you to get out of this. And this is the web that we need to crawl out of. So it's very good to know about it in order that we can move away from it. Or at least protect ourselves. Don't you think so? I think so. So let's send a salawat. Now, my friends, uh, being deceived is not an achievement. It's not a trophy. It's not a prize. It's not something to be proud about. Right? Just like deceiving is bad, being deceived is also bad. It has the same ajr. The same ajr that deceiving has, if you deceive other people, the, the same being deceived by other people. We should not get deceived. There's, we need to have that, that, that smartness. At least call it street smart or call it beguiling nature. At least have that to make ourselves free of that. Because people tend to be gullible. And I've seen that. They are so trusting. We all are so trusting. Any alim who comes over here and says anything, you fall for them. Any minute. And it's laughable. Shaitan laughs at that. Any sheikh who comes over here <coughs> and says anything, you know, people just fall for it. And you wonder, why are you falling for this? Why is it so easy to just make you follow? 
It's not obedience. Allah didn't ask for obedience like that. Is that how Allah asked for obedience? You know, just be blind and whatever you hear from the member, just do it. This is the wrong way of being a Muslim. And really, this is the first thing you need to get in your mind before you get caught in the, <coughs> in the web of this dunya. Before you get caught in the web of this dunya, you need to know how to deal with it. It's not easy, my friends. You know, I mean, you have to be smart enough to know, you have to be smart enough to know what's being said, who's saying it, and you know what, I'm not going to be anyone's fool, that I'm going to listen to anyone and do what they say, when the hereafter, they are not going to come to me, and I have to stand alone before Allah. I'm not going to become anyone's fool. I want to make sure that what I'm doing is right. I don't care who you are, which ayatollah you are, it's not important because you won't be there for me. I need to know my own self, what is right, and how things are going to be. Salawats. Thank you. No, that's all right. It's it's just like I'm I'm in a jet lag right now, so my breathing is still hard. All right, and you might notice that in the speech. It's all right. I'll. We only have a few more minutes to go. But really, this is the case, my friends. Dunya is deceiving. Imam Ali in the Quran has said this: Dunya is a deceiver. It is a con artist. It is out to fool you. And it, uh, it's out to make you believe in something that it's not. And if we are not sharp enough to know that we are being fooled or we are being deceived, we are being taken for a ride, then it's really easy to fall for it. It's very easy to fall for the dunya. And it's just like that. And I'm telling you, we, I'm talking about believers, are gullible and it's very easy for dunya to make us followers to believe why because there's this notion of obedience of itaat that we have where we don't question where we don't ask questions where we don't raise issues with what we are being told we don't get down to the foundation of things. Friends, we need to learn. We need to learn these things and uh, be smart about them. Right? Why? Because that's how we protect ourselves. A lot of times when you see Imam Ali, let me give an example, right? Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he was in the Battle of Safin with 12, you know, with thousands of men, right? In his army. Thousands of men. He is the commander, the leader. And these thousands of men, and they're men, grown up men in the battlefield. There's a rumor that is spread. They're next to the river, right? There's a rumor that is spread by Amr ibn As. He spread a rumor that uh, Muawiyah and his army are changing the direction of the river and overnight the river is going to run over the camp of Imam Ali. Yes, I mean, that's the rumor that was spread that, you know, and they were beating drums for the, uh, you know, the behind the scenes score of music. Right? <laughs> They're beating the drums over there for the effects. You know, and the army is hearing the drums and they're saying, oh my God, they're changing the river. They're changing the river. It's going to destroy us at night. We can't go to sleep. And you know what happens? They all run away. <laughs> Imam Ali is telling them, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
What are you talking about? You can't change the direction of the river. I mean, it makes no sense for you to do that. How? Why are you listening? No. What if they do? What if they do? Then we'll be all dead. Are you responsible for that? You know, and look at the questioning. Look at the thinking. This is exactly how we end up being deceived. Now, Imam Ali, he is known as Mushkil Kusha. You know what that means? I'm sure you all know what that means. It means that, you know, someone who, who solves problems, who helps. When you're in a problem, he's the one who comes and helps. But here's the issue. Imam Ali could not help the 12,000 people who are with him. Because even if he has to help you, the basic thing that's required of you is that you need to have basirat. If a person doesn't have basirat, even Imam Ali says, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. You need to know what's right and wrong. You need to know how to decipher things. Then Imam Ali can help you. Then Ahlul Bayt can, then Allah can help you. But if you don't know the basics of knowing what's right and wrong, this is where we get deceived. Nature of dunya is like that. It's like that. We need to know it so well so, don't, so we don't get deceived. Be smart. Be real. So that you know that, wow, this. At least have the basira so that Ahlul Bayt can help us. Salawats. You know, and you have many examples of history, that's not my idea. I just give one example out there so you can, you know, reflect on it. Nowadays, that the ideas, they come left and right. In fact, it has only become better. I mean, dunya and shaitan only have become better at this. They are not, you know, they also, I mean, if you look at shaitan, he also learns from trial and error. You know, he tries something, it works great, let's try it again. He tries something, it doesn't work, okay, leave that plan, it doesn't work. He's, he's also going through that, he's not an expert at what he does. And he's only getting better. And nowadays you see, they are getting better at this. If you look at the history, and again, I just want to give you a direction to think in, and you, you think about it. Look at the history and you'll see the animosity of the enemies of truth, of the prophets and the imams and all these things. And you look at the animosity and the, uh, the tricks of the enemies today. I mean, the tricks of the enemies today are so much more complicated and sophisticated that if you're not smart, you will easily, you will easily lose it. Look at the media, look at the, uh, the, the social media, look at internet, look at all of these things and see how news is being brought to you. Enemies used to come out in the open. Then in the time of the Prophet you had nifaq. They won't be open. But now here's the issue that happens. You know the enemies that are coming out now? You know how they are? It's like this. They will raise an issue. Right? In those days, they will raise one issue for fitna, right? No, nowadays what they do is that they raise 10 issues of fitna. They raise 10 issues of fitna, and they say, you know what? Uh, one of them is the truth. So now you are running around between the 10 things to find out which one is the truth, and all of them are wrong. All of them are invalid, all of them are batal. All of them are false. But you're being told that one of them is right. So you think that the truth is in one of these things and it's not even there. This is an ideal Machiavelli thought. You know who that was, here, Machiavelli? He was an Italian author who wrote the book The Prince, which is the book that modern politics is based on. The book is really notorious for the fact that 
it teaches you how to deceive people, how to control people, how to rule over them and do zulm on people in the best way possible. Efficiency in zulm. And how you do zulm. And it, is, it became the basis. Anyone who wants to learn politics has to learn that book. They go through that book in order to uh, uh, understand the methods that he has shown in that book. If you go and learn in any university, you'll see that book is taught when you are taking a major in politics. But that was done. Now what is it about? It's about improving how me as a zalim, as an oppressor, can do zulm on others and control them and deceive them and make sure that they're happy with the zulm that I'm doing on them. Not only are you doing zulm on them, but these people are thankful for you. They're saying, thank you so much, you are our boss. Yes, master, you are our boss. You are thankful for it also. This is, my friends, we are trying to now look through these different veils or layers of deception and trying to find the truth through them. It's become much more difficult. That's why when Imam Zamana comes back, recognizing him, acknowledging him, knowing him is going to be very difficult. Not that he is hard to find, it's the fact that we are filled with so much deception that it's hard to know. I mean really, I mean just simple things, we lose sight on that. When it comes to, for example, an alim or an ayatollah who maybe does something right, you see how many people turn against him. Turn against him completely at this and that. And they start talking. Bro, you don't even talk like that about a Muslim, let alone an alim. Why are you doing that? But this is what happens. Because we have been fed like that deceived like that into becoming stupid and that's what has to change in us because if the imam is going to come back he is depending on us to be smart to be able to look through these things to decipher what's right and wrong and not to get fooled by any tom dick and harry alim who comes around here and tells you what to do you need to question if i say something don't just accept because i'm saying it in fact, if you do, I'll be like, <laughs> really, Imam, just don't come back. <laughs> we have a long way to go. Why? Why are you just accepting whatever I'm saying? You need to question that. You need to uh, get convinced by it that it's the truth. Look at it in a deeper way. That's the way that we are going to become stronger as a people. Not doing itaat of alim. Itaat of alim, what does that mean? Now, this is thought of knowledge. And if that knowledge is given and if you are convinced that this is right, I have seen it and I have understood it, and this is the way Ahlul Bayt would have taught us, then yes, that's the convincing that's needed, my friends, for you to move forward. So, here Imam Ali is saying, in regards to the dunya, he says, إِذَا أَقْبَلَتَ dunya." When the dunya turns towards you, you know what it does to you? It gives you recognition and fame. Yes, people start respecting you. People look up to you. You have a good name in the society. That's what happens when dunya turns towards you. When the dunya turns towards you, Imam Ali is saying, then it's heydays for you. People respect you, they say salam to you, they stand up when you're doing salam. That's exactly what dunya does to you, you know, when it likes you. So now if you are respected in the community, you need to ask yourself, why? Why? Is, is this my day? Why am I being respected? For what? And 
Do I think that's something because of that? No. Is it because of me or because of people are good? That they show respect to me. You see how dunya now comes to you and says, No, people respect you. It means you are good. Well, I'm not good. It's the people who are good who have the decency to respect me. We give credit to ourselves as opposed to others. And this is how we end up bad. Right? Now, when the dunya turns against you and turns its back on you, you know what happens? Yes. Then not only does that recognition go away, now everyone starts talking bad about you. Even the things that are good in you, the things that you said were good, are not attributed to you, they are given to someone else. And you say, but that was my idea. <laughs> Sorry, man. It becomes known for other people. You know, here's really in short what Imam Ali is saying. You know, if you look in any community here also, anything like that, when a rich man says something stupid, everyone <laughs> regards it as wise. MashaAllah. <laughs> Good saying, brother. And if a poor man says something wise, <laughs> no one regards it. Look at it. Simple, right? When a poor man says something wise, no one gives interest in that. But when a rich guy says something stupid, everyone's talking about it. You see that? It's everywhere. Look at Donald Trump. You know? Just because he's rich, they listen and they talk about it. Oh, he said this. Why are you even talking about this? Is it important to talk about that? Really? Why? Because he's money. Just because he has money? That's the way dunya is. It gives you money in order that your voice can be heard. You have no money? Well, you know, as they say, no money, no honey. That's the way it works, my friends. Dunya is like that. So if you want to live according to the rules of dunya, then really dunya is taking you for a ride. It's time for us to get smartened up because that's what Imam needs of us. Imam Hussein wanted smart people, people who can think for themselves, independent-minded, open thinkers, who don't just take anything that anyone tells them. We don't need that. What we need are smart people, smart community that can question, that can ask the tough questions, and that accepts only when they're convinced. And that's good. It's better for us to have debates in discussions to, uh, to go through a point until we reach a conclusion rather than I just say something and because I'm the alim you listen to me. That's not the way it is supposed to be. The way it's supposed to be is that we need to question and ask and get convinced. And that's where we have to go my friend. This is why it's so necessary for us to become a smart community. Community that is smart, that questions, that just doesn't follow. They will be convinced and then they will follow. And then when after convincing when you follow, then this is the smart following that Ahlul Bayt were always looking for. They were looking for this sort of following. And that's what we need to offer them. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and the blessing to be on the right path, the wisdom to understand his guidance, hasten the reappearance of our Imam, Make us his helper when he comes. Wa akhirul davana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen.